AI makes things so much better, so much deeper. And with all the tools we have, you can just do what you want to do 10 years ago much more effectively. So for example, personalization. A lot of times we started with like customer segmentation and then we do micro segmentation. But right now it really a like cookie level personalization. Like the personalization is like so granular. You can really do like, oh, to each customer coming to my website, what can we do for them? This is Social Pulse Podcast Retail Edition, your go-to guide to solving your biggest retail social media marketing challenges authentically. I'm your host, Mike Alden, and each episode is an honest and frank look at what marketers go through from awful algorithms to terrific trends and ideas that you can apply to your own business. And now, the rest of today's episode. Welcome back to Social Pulse Podcast Retail Edition, where we're digging into the challenges, successes, and stories of social media and community professionals in the industry, just like you. Subscribe to gain valuable insights that you'll be able to apply to your own work and social presence from each and every episode. Now imagine walking into a store where every promotional sign you see is tailored just for you, recommending exactly what you need based on your past purchases and preferences. Now, Picture that level of personalization extending to your online shopping experience. This isn't a distant future scenario, but a present day reality, thanks to the power of generative AI in retail media networks. Major players like Amazon, Microsoft, and Walmart are leading this transformation, showcasing the monumental shifts in enhancing operations and revolutionizing customer experiences. But what exactly is generative AI and how is it being applied in retail media networks? Does it really hold the power to change the way retailers interact with customers? And more importantly, how can other brands, including smaller retail media networks, tap into this technology to stay competitive? Our guest today is Eva Dong, a seasoned expert with a decade of AI and digital marketing experience. Eva's held transformative leadership positions at McKinsey and & Company and Visa and is now an entrepreneur dedicated to bringing AI-driven marketing solutions to brands around the world. Eva, welcome to the show. We're excited to dive into the transformative power of Gen AI and retail media networks and how brands can leverage this technology to enhance their customer experience. Experiences. How are you doing? Good, doing good. Thank you for having me, Mike. So glad to talk to you. Can you start by just kind of sharing your journey in the world of AI and marketing technology? Yes, of course. So I actually started my journey in the world of AI and then encountered marketing and marketing technology on my way. And now I'm fully in the cross domain of AI and marketing technology and making my superpower. So to start with, I was a machine learning data scientist at Visa. Then I joined a McKinsey and company under the marketing sales umbrella. So during that time, I started to serve my client using machine learning to serve them on marketing topics, such as how do you use machine learning to predict to uh, customer behavior, such as their next product to buy, such as their lifetime value, uh, run a lot of customer segmentation for personalization purpose. Um, and while I'm serving my clients, I start to realize it's impossible to fully leverage machine learning and AI without a robust infrastructure of marketing. So starting at that time, I start to rebuild and transform my clients' marketing technology infrastructure and analytics capability at the same time. So this way turned out to be very um, impactful and substantial impact. So therefore, in the last 10 years, I've been in the field of AI and marketing technology, and the field is evolving dramatically. It's getting more and more exciting. Right. And we've talked about AI on this show before, and doubtless everyone listening's got some level of understanding, but just to level set, can you explain what generative AI is and how it differs maybe from other types of AI? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I think everybody's talking about it, but sometimes like um, some people don't like fully understand it and just like riding the wave. Um, yeah, happy to explain it. Um, maybe I'll take a step back and start with the larger concept of AI. So artificial intelligence is a really large and general concept with a long history. So artificial intelligence refers to the simulation of human intelligence in machine that is programmed to think and learn like a human. And in AI umbrella, there's many subsets. So to start with, I mentioned I start my career as a machine learning data scientist. So machine learning is a subset of AI that involves using data to train algorithms to make predictions and decisions. In the retail world specifically, for example, machine learning can analyze historical sales data to forecast future sales. 
And then another concept is called deep learning. So deep learning is a subset of machine learning. You can think about it as machine learning in neural network. So this way is get more complex and get deeper and can recognize patterns and make decisions using neural network. So example of that will be using deep learning to analyze customer feedback and you can identify the sentiment of that. And a different set of AI is called generative AI. We call Gen AI. And that part set apart from everything I just talked about with its capability to produce original outputs. So generative AI is really a typical of AI that generates new content. It could be text, images, videos, music, anything. So in today's world, for example, ChatGPT generate text, Dali and MidJourney generate image, Sora generate videos. In the retail world, for example, you can use this kind of tool to generate like your personalized marketing messages. Um, it can generate product images. Um, so the, in, in general, in summary, um, AI they really have different subsets, um, but any type of AI is trying to mimic human intelligence. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Now, you'd written an article on LinkedIn, AI-driven marketing, transforming retail media networks with Gen AI. And it highlighted some really pioneering examples from Amazon, Microsoft, and Walmart. And in the article, you mentioned a bunch of huge cases about how these large retail media networks were leveraging Gen AI to achieve higher efficiency and effectiveness. Three of them I found were really interesting. You had in-store retail media, enhancing product listings and descriptions and personalization and customer engagement. I love to discuss them one by one, if you wouldn't mind starting with in-store retail media, what exactly have these pioneers done and what's been the impact? So in-store retail media is really interesting. So the goal of it is to bridge the digital and the physical advertising. So when this thing become a trend, I find it like really cool because like everything we have been talking about in the last two decades is like, you got to bring things online. You've got to transform from in offline to online. You got to transform from physical to digital, but it seems like the trend is circling back. We are bringing things from digital to the physical world. So, but actually it makes sense when you actually think about it. So when we say retail media network, it's all about real estate, right? You have a space on your website and you let the brand use that space to advertise for themselves. But similarly, people have, like brands have stores. Stores also have real estate. You can also leverage that to advertise for the brands and then charge them a fee for it. In that sense, Walmart is like, obviously the perfect leading leader in this space. Like Walmart, as all the US listeners know, has a lot of lot of stores across all kinds of parts of the United States. So I know Walmart specifically have rolled out this capability in store retail media to 5,000 of their stores. So to explain it more, so I said this, this part in store retail media is to bring the bridge of digital and physical advertising. It aimed to provide a very immersive and interactive experience for the customers. So for example, in the store, there might be like digital screens and then you can find all kinds of personalized promotions and product recommendations for you. Um, there also could be targeted audio ads in the specific area of the store that you can listen to, or it could be like product demos that maybe you can scan a QR code in the store and then like it will jump, open up a website and direct you to do something. Um, among them, I think there are two capabilities I find like very advanced and new. Um, one thing is called interactive display. So these are the digital screens I just talked about in the store. Um, sometimes they can recognize who you are, maybe through their loyalty program, Boma Plus, and then they can know who you are, what you have purchased, and even what you have browsed online. So maybe in your customer decision journey, they know you browse this vacuum cleaner online, then you come to the store to check it out, and they will they will know, okay, let me display all the vacuum like technical stuff for you on the screen, and you can play with it. It could be 3D. So this way, the display can really respond to customer queries at real time and answer them with real need. Another one similarly answering things in real time is a virtual assistant. So maybe you can open up a bot to chat with you while you're in the store. It can help you to find products. It can answer questions for you and provide a very personalized experience, but not adding any pressure to the human stuff in the store. So that's two things I find very interesting. So 
for Walmart specifically, I think Walmart is like very big on retail media network. I think their annual revenue is over three billion dollars, and industry estimate is that in-store retail media accounts for about ten to fifteen percent of their total RMN revenue. So that will translate to three hundred million dollar, which is like very significant. Um, but besides that, there's more to it. Um, in-store retail media is growing faster than digital. Um, estimate about twenty-five to thirty. Percent growth rate year over year, and also there's already stats coming back, even though it's early on. That campaigns using the true omni channel in retail campaign has a twenty to thirty percent higher return on ad spend than the digital only campaigns. And lastly, as you can imagine, like with the amount of traffic to the Walmart stores every day, this kind of in-store retail media can really reach a lot of food traffic that the online world or the app world can't reach.、Um, so overall, that's a very good win and really gr- big growth driver for Walmart right now. That makes a lot of sense, and I know we are very close to having even more immersive experiences. My friend Katie Richmond has a startup,、uh, Loud Labs. I've had her on my other podcast, AI and Marketing Impact, and she's talked about how they're combining artificial intelligence with augmented reality and that knowledge of location, that geolocation targeting, so that as folks are walking up and down these aisles, for instance, their device might send a haptic signal to their wrist, you know, or if they happen to be wearing a wearable, they might see a pop-up display that. Provides a lot of that additional contextual information that you're talking about, without necessarily having to have a screen installed on the、mm-hmm. shelving unit or something like that,、uh, which would be more cost effective for the retailer. But I'm wondering, you know, we were talking about these large retail media networks. W- what's an example of a smaller retail media network, and and what can they learn from the things that you're talking about? Yeah, I think first of all, if you already have a lot of stores for your brand, you should definitely use it. I think the de- definition of an omni-channel is has been evolving. So as marketers, we all know omni-channel is the best. So a lot of brands start with their、uh, physical stores, they move everything to the online store, and then talk about omni-channel. But I think now things start to change a little bit. You have to bring the online experience to your offline experience too. So I think it's not that difficult to install some like digital. Displays. I think the thing you mentioned is much more interesting, but it seems like much more advanced, maybe in the future. But some like just like digital displays in your store could be like very effective. One, it can add additional revenue streams for you because for your clients, you are not only providing them advertising online, but also offline, providing that true omni-channel experience. And secondly, you can offer advertisers、uh, a different way to reach your customers. It could be more touch point along their distant journey. It could. Be more effective and answer things they couldn't answer online. That makes a lot of sense, folks. We're talking with Eva Dong about the impact of AI on retail marketing and retail media networks. And before we get to the next couple of use cases of Gen AI, let me share with you one of the ways that Agora Pulse is layering AI into every part of that tool. Hey there, Daryl Brail, Chief Marketing Officer here at Agora Pulse, the industry's best social media management platform. I gotta tell you, I love AI. Why? I don't view it as a threat. Rather, it makes me better. It's a colleague. It's a collaborator. Let's see, I do a social media post, but you know what? I'm a little long-winded. I want it shorter. Maybe I want it longer. Maybe I want it punchier, more assertive, more inspirational, more funny. That's what our writing assistant does. Check it out, agorapulse.com. So, Eva, what was the second use case that you found about how generative AI is being leveraged for retail marketing? So the second thing、um, I found very interesting is with Amazon, and this one I want to talk about enhancing product listing and descriptions using Gen AI. As we all know, like Amazon has a lot of vendors and sellers on them, and there's like a tons of different SKUs. And Amazon provide a lot of、um, tools for this kind of vendors, regardless of big or small. So one thing they have been using General AI to do is is to use Gen AI to enhance their product listings. So this way they can write product descriptions. Very quickly and efficiently, they can generate human-like texting, make the description very engaging and informative, and also at the same time for Amazon, it also ensures like the product descriptions across the website have a consistent tone and style. This also, sorry, let me say that back. It also ensures for. 
and also for Amazon, it also ensures all the product descriptions can maintain a consistent tone and style across the platform. This is especially very important for Amazon because there are just so many vendors and so many products, and sometimes it's impossible to control everyone. The stats I heard is there's over 100,000 Amazon sellers already adopting this kind of AI tools for product descriptions, but I suspect the actual number should be higher than 100,000. There's many impact from this technology. I'll break it into efficiency and effectiveness. On the efficiency side, I think it's quite easy to understand. Once you start using AI to write things, it can be very efficient. It can save a lot of time, especially when you have a lot of skills. And it's very good for small business too, who doesn't have a lot of resource to do this kind of ad copy. And then for effectiveness, I'll break down to two things. I think the first thing will be improved product discoverability. So once the AI listing writes your product description, it can be more detailed, more accurate, and it can be optimized for the search engines, which means it, can know, it knows what kind of keywords to use, and it can be more comprehensive. This kind of product listings will become, will make the product in higher rank, and eventually that means driving more traffic to your listing and driving more revenue eventually. Um, and the second part will be after you have that discoverability, after traffic already come to your product detail page, um, a more clear and engaging product description can help um, customers feel more confident about your product. And eventually that means higher conversion rate and higher revenue. That makes a lot of sense. In fact, longtime listeners of the show, uh, you can go back and listen to our episode of, with Feedonomics because they're employing a lot of these same technologies that are helping us take the products that are in our shops and distribute them across many of these retail media networks and other kinds of shops like Facebook shops, Pinterest shops, and so on, and allowing us to effectively on the fly customize a lot of those descriptions and product titles and that sort of thing for each platform because it is a little bit different for each platform as well as for each different audience. So that's really fascinating that we're integrating a lot of these tools. So, so what's been the impact or strategy when it comes to these smaller retail networks? Yeah, I think like you have to help each other. So when Amazon helps the sellers and vendors to write better product descriptions, get more traffic and more revenue, eventually it will make the sellers and vendors more confident and put more resource into the Amazon channel compared to other channels. And eventually it become like really like beneficiary ecosystem better for each other. So I think for smaller networks, you also can think about like, what is the roadblock for your merchant vendors and sellers? Like, are they struggling with um, product listing? Um, are they wasting a lot of time to write this kind of thing, but couldn't get a ranking that they deserve? If that's the case, I think it could make sense to implement in AI tools like this to generate more clear, concise, and very attractive product descriptions for themselves to make themselves easier and they will like your channel more and eventually that's more revenue for the, the retail media network. Got it. Makes absolute sense. So what was the third use case and, and what's the impact that it's had? So the last one I chose personalization and customer engagement. And the pioneers I chose this one is Microsoft. And Microsoft is a little bit special compared to like Walmart and Amazon. Like we all know Walmart and Amazon like huge e-commerce who has huge retail media network. But Microsoft also has a retail media network. At the same time, Microsoft is also like a pure technology company that provides a lot of the tools. So instead of like not only Microsoft is not only a competitor, but also enabler in this game. And then here I want to talk about personalization and customer engagement. Both of them are not new concept. I think for us as marketers and for us as retail experts, like this concept we have been talking about it for a long time. But I think the, the change now is AI makes things so much better, so much deeper. And um, with all the tools we had, you can just do what you want to do 10 years ago much more effectively. So for example, personalization. A lot of times we started with like 
customer segmentation, and then we do micro segmentation. But right now, it really like cookie level personalization. Like the personalization is like so granular. You can really to like oh to each customer um, coming to my website, what can we do for them? Um, Microsoft specifically has a tool called Azure Azure Personalizer. That's a machine learning based API can really like personalize content for users in real time. Um, so when they come to your website, you can like decide to show them how to sort your product differently, what to recommend them, and all of that will uh, eventually increase engagement and conversions. And another thing we can talk about is like the enhance the customer interactions. So chatbot is not new, but chatbot is becoming better and better. And then Microsoft provide like a suite of all kinds of bots for you. So there could be customer service bot for you, other post transaction services. There also could be conversion bot that focus more on like how to attract you and how to give you the best advice to help you on this journey to decide which product to buy. Mike and I actually talk more in detail about this in our other other podcast, the impact, the impact podcast. And then lastly, there, there's also a lot of like vision search. So for example, you see someone has a really beautiful dress, but you're too scared to ask them where did they bought it. So you can take a picture of that dress and then upload to your search. And then Azure um, provide this kind of like vision API to recognize the, if not the same product on your website. Um, so all of that um, has shown very significant impact. Um, the stats I've heard is like for a click-through rate with the AI-driven optimization, it can increase by 20 to 30%. For conversion rate, it can increase 15 to 25%. And then eventually that translates to revenue growth. I heard specifically for RMN, if you use Azure AI optimization, you can get a 10% increase in growth on average. So all of that is very, very significant. If you think about today's world, like every growth is like so valuable. Oh, 10% is, is huge. When I'm talking to clients about, you know, they're excited because they're seeing one, maybe two, 3% uh, improvement due to a little bit of a tweak they did in conversion operate op optimization. 10% is massive. How are you applying this or recommending that you apply this to smaller retail networks? So I definitely recommend smaller retail networks to like harness AI, like bring the AI capabilities you can bring to your network. Maybe you couldn't bring everything. I, I know Microsoft offer a lot of things and there's many, many other vendors on the, on the world to offer many, many things. But think about like, what is your the most needing for you, but the eventual thing is like, it comes down to one, you have to personalize the experience for your visitors. And two, that has to be effective for your merchant. Got it. Got it. So I've got just one more question for you. I'd love for you to talk about some of the challenges and the pitfalls that brands might face when they're trying to integrate generative AI into these kinds of operations. I think there's like two obvious ones, quantity and quality and data management. So as we all know, all kinds of AI generative AI specifically, all the large language models heavily relies on data sets. This kind of data sets not only need to be large, also is need to be high quality. If the data is poor quality or there's not enough data, any kind of like AI will have like inaccurate outputs or it will start hallucinating, like doesn't give you the thing that you want to do. So and I think for a smaller retail media network, like you couldn't have like all the data like Microsoft, like Amazon, but at the same time, you can still invest in very robust data management practice. You have to make sure your data is very clean, very organized, up to date, and all of that will like help you generate better, like will help you improve the AI tools you already have. And then give you better output. The second part is like, there's a lot of tools on the market that you don't have to start from scratch. You don't have to build your own large language models. A lot of times you can bring a vendor and then, but I will always suggest you do some kind of tweaking on top of it. Um, don't just take things as it is. Um, so one thing you can do is rack, uh, which is retrieval augmented generation. Uh, or if you have more data science capability, do something like fine tuning, uh, which can add more of your brand and tone and brand style into it. That is one part about data. And the second part is, which is also a very popular thing in the AI world is um, ethical and legal considerations. Um, so with the rise of AI, there's a lot of like um, 
what is the intellectual property rights? Like, can you train on this data? Like, how do you provide、um, data privacy in this new world? I think for specifically for smaller vendors. <clears throat> Specifically for smaller vendors,、um, like not only you have to take care of your own data privacy、um, and IP rights, you also have to think about when you bring in an external vendor, are they compliant to all kinds of laws?、Um, this is kind of difficult because a lot of the AI laws is not very comprehensive. Like you know, the United States just start to like rolling out this kind of laws. The EU start rolling out this kind of laws, but none of them is like. Like exactly there, like everything is is evolving. So we really have to stay very informed to the relevant laws and regulations. Once everything changed, that、like、you have to pay attention not only to yourself but also to the third party vendors you bring in. Thank you so much for bringing up the point about data. First, from the concept of the data that we're giving to the AI, it's got to be cleaned up because garbage in, garbage out. And if we're giving the AI a bunch of confusing, un Clear or incomplete data, it's not going to give us the kinds of conclusions we're looking for. But the other really important point is to be aware of the bias that can work itself into the AI.、Mm-hmm. And retail is a great example. If you've had a certain segment of customers who have previously purchased a product. The AI isn't going to understand that there may be other external factors as to why that is. It's just going to assume that those are the only segment of customers who could potentially be interested in that particular product, where that might not actually be true. And so, those are the kinds of things where it's so important that humans are looking at the data that we're inputting into these systems and the output that's coming out, and judging whether or not it's factual, it's true, it's not hallucinatory, and that there's no bias that's inherent in those conclusions. So, thank you so much. For sharing that, Eva, you've been absolutely amazing. This has been such a thought-provoking episode. For folks who want to learn more from you, where can they go to connect with you? I'm very active on LinkedIn. You can find me just by searching Eva Dong or Eva Dong Ten Ten on LinkedIn. And then I also run a newsletter called Smart AI Marketing on LinkedIn. Some of the points we talked about today, including the article, the article Mike mentioned about retail media network and Gen AI, is also one of the articles on my newsletter. So feel free to come to LinkedIn and find me and exchange ideas to me. Subscribe to my newsletter. At the same time, I start to like do more in. Engagement on Twitter or X. I'm also Eva Dom Ten Ten on the platform.、I'm、really looking forward to have more idea exchange with professionals and experts in the industry. Fantastic! Thank you, Eva. Thank you all of you for listening. We will have all those links and more in the show notes. And don't forget to find us on Apple, the Social Pulse Podcast Retail Edition, and drop us a review. We'd love to know what you think. Until next time, thank you for listening to another episode of Social Pulse Podcast Retail Edition. Hosted by Mike Alton and powered by Agora Pulse, the number one rated social media management solution, which you can learn more about at agorapulse.com. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on your favorite podcast player and be sure to leave us a review. Your feedback is important to us. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.